Welcome everyone to Learning with Rev. In this video, we are going to be learning some basic methods in TensorFlow that you can use to make sure your environment is set up properly. The first thing is checking your TensorFlow version. Sometimes you may have written some code in TensorFlow and then you updated your Python packages and something breaks. So you can always do tf underscore underscore version underscore underscore and this will tell us our Python ver or our TensorFlow version. From here, we can go to the TensorFlow docs and we can go to the 2.5 API, which is where we are now, or we can go back and we can go to any version of past TensorFlow that may have some breaking changes. So it's really important if you ever have any things that break or if you're trying to learn something new, you check out the TensorFlow API. Next, check our CPU and GPU. So first we're gonna do our GPU test checks and tests. These are all from the tf.tests section of the API. If you're running unit tests, these are important to use. Sometimes I just check these whenever I am creating a new Python environment to make sure everything is built properly. So uh, first thing we have here is, is GPU available? And we have true, and that is uh, GPU zero, that's its name. Next, we are checking, is it built with CUDA for NVIDIA GPUs? This is true. And then ROCM is built with ROCM for AMD GPUs. It is an open source system that they use for their acceleration, and that is false because this is a Google uh, Collab uh, notebook. It's being run on Google servers uh, with a Tesla GPU. And we'll see that in just a minute, what kind of GPU we're using. So uh, earlier this week, I had installed TensorFlow on my system. I had checked to see if it was built with CUDA. That was true, so I had a GPU version. However, it could not find my GPU. That's because we had a miscompatibility of CUDA and CUDA Toolkit. I had to reinstall those. Um, and I recommend using Anaconda on your own system because it has its own CUDA Toolkit package and that will make sure the compatibility is always there. Next, you want to check for CPU. Uh, is built with XLA. This is uh, Intel's acceleration on their CPUs. This is true. And sometimes you don't always want to run your, your neural network with CUDA. If you have something that is not big, not big imaging uh, training, not big convolutional neural nets, just maybe a few dense layers, basic autoencoder, you may want to train on the CPU. You can test to see which one is faster by just seeing how long it takes to go through an epic or two with your data. Sometimes it is slower on the NVIDIA GPU because it has to pass the memory through the CPU, from memory to the CPU to the GPU memory whenever you're reading in new data if it's going through it very, very fast. And then this last thing here, we are going to print out our device library from tensorflow.python.client and then list local devices. And here we can see we have a CPU, and this has a memory limit of uh, 268,000 bytes, 268 million bytes. So we have a 268 megabyte limit, uh, and that's just because we are on the free version of Collab. And then we also have our GPU device with its own memory limit. This has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have 14 gigabytes of memory. This may change over time based on how much our VM is allocated with the free version of Collab. Uh, on the bus ID of one, and then it is a Tesla T4 GPU with compute compatibility 7.5. There is some compute compatibility that you need to check. It's like every generation increases it. It doesn't really mean much in software, but it does mean that it has more tensor cores, more CUDA cores, whatever sort of acceleration it is using. So this was a quick review on some common TensorFlow methods that you can use to make sure that your system is working. If you learned something, please like this video. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.